my dear students today i would be taking up a very important topic and this topic would be very important from different perspectives embryology pediatrics fundamentals of neurology or neurosurgery so what basically i would be taking up would be the neural tube defects their embryogenesis their clinical consequences now first of all you have to go back to the knowledge of embryology and from our sustained knowledge of embryology we know that we have got the neural tube the cranial end and the caudal end of the neural tube and from the cranial end develops the brain from the caudal end would develop the spinal cord in addition to this at the same time we would be having the development of the skeletal system i mean to say the bones of the skull as well as the vertebral column they don't develop like the chapters of book 1 2 3 4 no multiple organ systems develop simultaneously so the growth embryogenesis of the nervous system is in line with the development of the skeletal system we have got this anterior neuropore and posterior neuropore and they need to get closed now taking the anterior end of the neural tube first what can happen we can have a developmental defect in which the bones of the skull simply are not formed and what they can do they can leave a vent in the cranium and multiple things can come out through this vent so once the bones of the skull are not fully covering each other they are not coming together the vent can be there and through this vent we can have the protrusion of simply the meninges so we have this clinical condition called as cranium bifidum with meningocele that means the brain tissue is inside only the meninges are coming out after that there can be a severer form of the disease in which we can have the brain tissue along with the meninges protruding out cranium bifidum with meningeal and cephalocele so these are two important terminologies at the cranial end of the neural tube now we can have something we call as an encephaly that the anterior neuropore fails to close especially at the fourth week of intrauterine life and what we can have we can have mal development of the upper end of the neural tube and basically these anencephalic babies they cannot survive it's a very severe condition and anencephaly can be diagnosed early by increased ahp levels alpha fetoprotein levels in addition to being detected by ultrasound at the early period these fetuses usually abort and they are incompatible this clinical condition is incompatible with life in addition to this we know from our normal anatomy of the posterior cranial fossa the cerebellum that there are these cerebellar tonsils i'm not talking about palatine tonsils the cerebellar tonsils and the vermis of the cerebellum normally it does not protrude through foramen magnum but under certain conditions the cerebellar vermis and the cerebellar tonsils can herniate through the foramen magnum and what they can do they can cause compression compression of what the midbrain and you know midbrain medulla there are those vital centers in the medulla the cardiorespiratory centers in the medulla and immediate herniation can cause spon- sudden death as well so arnold chiari mal formation is basically having multiple types but the basic feature is the herniation of the cerebellar vermis and the cerebellar tonsils and from our anatomical knowledge we already know that the last four cranial nerves arise from medulla and there can be compression of these cranial nerves as well and then can be paralysis of these cranial nerves so this is what is asked about arnold chiari malformation 
Now going to the caudal end of the neural tube, we have the spinal cord developing from this caudal end, but the spinal cord develops in relation to the vertebra. Imagine that the vertebra don't fuse in the center, so we can be having a vent in the vertebra as well. And that clinical condition in which the vertebra fail to fuse is called as spina bifida. Say, the spine of the vertebral bodies is bifid. Now, in case this defect is covered by, occluded by something, say a tuft of hair, we call it spina bifida occulta. Now again, there can be different possibilities. The first possibility would be that the spinal cord remains inside, but the meninges protrude out. So this clinical condition would be spina bifida plus meningocele. In case the spinal cord also comes out or herniates through this defect, we call it as the spina bifida plus meningomyelocele. So we add the term mylo and it becomes meningomyelocele. Then we have a severe form of this disease in the form of spina bifida plus rachishisis in which the spinal cord itself is split and it causes it is a more dangerous form of a disease because there can be paralysis of the lower limbs associated with problems in the bladder neurogenic bladder and this clinical condition is also classified as an open neural tube defect and characterized by increased AFP levels and we have to essentially give folic acid to pregnant females because deficiency of folic acid leads to open neural tube defects. I hope this small class of mine has been a bit useful to you and you might have some questions from these topics asked. Thanks a lot.